Hey folks, thought I would show ZF Graveyard on Hardcore Frost Mage, how I'm making gold and exactly how much gold you can make with this farm. Like like the uh, solo farm I did is probably not the best farm, but it's pretty good and it's something I'm pretty comfortable with. So zone in, long load screen. The run is pretty, pretty safe. Um, you do want to make sure that you're buffed up. I like ice armor. I put my shields on, but at 60 you can run pretty much to the graveyard without aggroing anything if you're careful and a little lucky. Um, this pack will get a little close and may aggro and maybe not. Yeah, see I got around that guy. If you were a lower level, you'd go up here, up this little hill, and jump onto the top of this wall and that's a safe spot. You can reset the mobs behind you. I'm pretty comfortable with this farm. I've done this a lot over the years at different um, different levels to level. In hardcore, I can do this starting at 44. Um, in softcore, on like classic era, I will start at 41 and use a combination of shadow pots and armor pots. The run is the hardest part. The kill is actually not, but uh, it's sketchy at those low levels. And it's sketchy even in the mid 40s on hardcore. I'm, I'm pretty careful if I do that. So I aggro that guy. The main thing I'm watching out for as I run through here is anything called Shadow Hunter. That's the ones that you want to always kill. Run by there. Witch Doctor. These guys just catch uh, totems. So if you're running and you had a big group of mobs chasing you here, you'd want to reset. You could also, at this level, you can just start the graveyard pole right away. But to reset, you could jump up here. This is one spot that will reset everything. And then the second reset spot is kind of the main one for me. It's up here. Right there. So I will wait for this all to reset and then show the next part of it. And just real quick, my talent or uh, my gear is a combination of dungeon gear still and raiding gear. I've just started to raid on this character. I'm in uh, sort of the uh, most active raiding guild. It's been around for quite a while in uh, the hardcore world and I am, I don't mind saying, probably the absolute worst raider in my guild right now. I'm like total carry but uh, they're all pretty nice and um, as long as you follow instructions carefully and you show up prepared, you got all your consumes or everything, you are allowed into the lower level raids and um, try not to make too many waves, don't make any mistakes, don't get anyone else killed and you're good. So uh, my talents are Deep Frost, and real quick, I'll show this in a second. You want to kill, if you're doing this as careful as possible, you want to kill the two pats that come into this room. One is this one from the start that we came in right here, and another one comes from back here. Shouldn't have let that guy heal, but uh, that's all right. So um, one comes from back here. And another one comes less frequently on a pat from back here, further in. And fortunately, here he is. And this is the one we absolutely want to kill. This guy might hex me right now. And even a 46 can actually hex a 60. It's happened to me. Usually they miss. But if you get hexed, it's not good. You can't do anything. You're a frog for a little while. But if you're just fighting one, they might come over and melee you a little bit. And you're totally fine. All right. So I will start my loot appraiser that's just based off TSM auction values and we'll show the currency looted as well. Um, and now we'll start the poll and I'll get rid of my uh, carrot. Or sorry, not the poll, the clear. The, the graveyards, the graves. Bringing out the zombies. And if you don't know, you're clicking these and they always have, they have like an RNG chance of being um, little bits of worthless loot inside or a zombie that's going to spawn. And the zombies, as long as you haven't pulled the boss yet, would stand right there. So you always start off by pulling the boss by just walking into his room over this little threshold. So you walk over the little threshold. You see his little emote, how dare you enter my sanctum. And you start clicking each grave. And if nothing comes out after one click, it was the items. You can freeze those there and you go to the first safe spot, which is behind this big vase. There's three phases to this opening of the graves. Waiting on that guy. There he goes. So see, they ran back out to their graves now. 
and this guy for some reason. Is there more than one guy in here or is it just one guy? I don't know what these guys are doing here. Usually these guys are going back out here, but that's okay, you know. If you're level 60, you can just kill them. I don't want to open that grave right now. All right. And like I play full scaredy cat. If you come in here, you should be able to run straight here, run right into the boss start, and then clear the graves all in like one pull, at least this first side of them. But if you want to be extremely careful, you're clearing those two mobs I showed. You do this in three phases. So this is like phase two. You click all of these graves. You just click one time. I used to make these videos and uh, I would have like my um, guy's emotes on. So, you know, he's a. Uh, Little guy here and he would just be like um i can't do that i can't click that just saying over and over is like so annoying so anyway back to this safe spot so i turn that off it's um like the verbal emotes i forget what it's called i didn't start my timer at the run i should have so i'm already two minutes in but i'm talking quite a bit um, you can actually get these runs done much quicker. And then the last set of graves, and you want to be careful here, you got to make the jump, um, the jump up. And I'll talk about what I would do if I didn't make a jump in a second. But click all these last graves like that, and then this is the jump that you absolutely have to make every time like that. And I can do it pretty easy because I've been doing this for years, and I don't really miss it ever, but it's possible. Then you jump up here, up the face of that statue. You jump up to this platform. You gotta wait for them all to reset. You can make this jump if you're not mounted, but I miss it most of the time. So I wait for them all to reset. I mount up. And jump up and get your guys stuck up here. And then jump all the way up. So now we're ready to start the pull. Um, if you did the graves the way I did, they stay over here in this little entryway, most of these mobs that I clicked over here. If you didn't, they would be um, back out here and you would pull them to start. If there's mobs out here, I like to pull them to start with a um, with a flame strike and um, because it leaves them on the ground a little bit and there's less chance that they're going to be made. But uh, I'm going to just start the pull here. I switch over to mage armor to save armor. It's not necessary at 60. Um, so the only ones I'll get sort of like that, I'll get these guys here. There they go. Jump across, hit that stone, jump across, hit this stone, walk down under here. You do not want to fall down. Come over to this spot here, turn around, rank one blizzard right on the front to get all of those guys. I do a rank one blizzard here to get all of those guys, and that's it. And now it's just jumping back and forth. Jump jump you can actually hit this little corner it's actually better to almost hit the little corner every time that's a good marker for the jump and you can see they stop if you're on this platform and they'll come around if you're on this one you gotta get them all around the corner and now they sort of keep going toward you keeping my shield up i'm being like extremely careful here and the main thing is you do not want to miss the jump And even though they're all up here now, we're ready to start the kill, I keep jumping back and forth a little bit because each time you're in the air, they actually come toward you down in this little dip that's down below me here. And it actually stacks them a little more. If you do it a whole bunch of times, you can see that you stack them up pretty good. And then you're going to stack them again with the wizard. That was actually a rank one, um, just to get them really well stacked. Just like that. And now we kill them. And the kill is quick as a level 60, as a level, um, you know, 45 uh, or something when you're in here. You got to be pretty careful with mana. Um, you have to, uh, you know, you're using gems. You got to absolutely be sure that you have um, mage armor up, which I do. I would have all my consumes up, everything else. But in this case, it's pretty safe. And this should be the kill here. I'm timing it so that I kill them all over here where I can loot them. You do not want to kill them on this wall. It's uh, more complicated to actually um, loot them. 
if you do. So everybody should die now, I think. Yeah, that'll be it. Alright, so let's see what we got. I didn't have like a kill counter on, but, uh, or maybe I do here. Got a couple greens to start. Yeah, let me take the mouse off there. Yeah, mob kills four. That's not right. Alright. Have my thing set up to ding if anything is over 15 silver, which is a pretty low threshold, so it does a lot. But you can see I got um, three good greens. I got a lockbox, which shows a zero value in um, this farm, or which shows a zero value in uh, in my loot appraiser, which is based off the TSM, like region market um, auction values. So you can see, you get like a lot of greens from these guys. You get a lot of mage weave cloth. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I got a lot more greens than you typically would in here. This was a very lucky run, but um, this didn't take me that long. Seven minutes from here, and it was another minute to run, so eight. And I'm up to um, three gold, 88 silver in just raw currency looted, and 21 gold in stuff, if you believe the TSM auction values. And it looks like I got one green, two, three... A lockbox that's not included in there that'll have another green in it that's worth one or two gold four five six so six greens that's a lot for this um so this was like a super lucky run to be honest with you sometimes you get one green or two and that's it but you know you get these grays that are worth another gold and um you know this is actually a pretty good ring probably for a rogue or something so anyway um a lucky run but a good run you can see you can get um, a good amount of gold in this and so what can go wrong in this first of all like i said clear anything called a shadow hunter that's pretty close um, the second thing that can go wrong and probably most common is to miss the jump you do not want to miss this jump and you can see it's um pretty uh it's pretty forgiving like i'm jumping really wide and still barely making it um one thing i should have mentioned at the very top of this you must have run speed on your boots um you can do this jump if you don't i've done this on a self-found mage um and leveled all the way up for many many levels but the jump is hard you gotta be extremely careful um so you do want speed increase it gives you all of that but it is possible to jump and just boy i'm really jumping wide and trying to miss it miss the jump and you fall down here and a huge pack of mobs comes down here um as usual it's stay calm run right down the minute a mob gets to you, you click your lip you then got your six seconds to run around here jump they would still be on you to this point make the jump back and they'll start around here and you're safe that's um your number one get out of jail free card number two if everything really goes wrong and you just can't get up there or you fell again or something then you're getting to petri out um, stage and you can do it even when you're not grouped with another um, person if you have a macro that lets you oh my gosh where is it log out of here this is the leave party macro it uh it, it like feigns that it's uh inviting someone else to a group and then uninviting them right away and then you're leaving that party um and so then a few seconds after you click that it would start a one minute timer to teleport you out of this instance to the Lyris graveyard and then you would need to have petri flast and you'd be immune for a minute and there's some nuance to doing that you actually don't want to leave until after you've petried or you have to petri twice so the last thing that could screw you over is missing this jump. This jump, like I said, um, you got to just be able to jump up there. And it looks pretty easy. But if you come in and practice this a little bit, you see that um, you would see that if you've never done it, it actually can be more challenging. Um, it's easy to miss it. So... The way to make this jump, the way I always do, is there is like a little line that you can see right here. That's my target, where this line points to, right here. And then I pretend, this is kind of odd, but I pretend that from this shadow up to this corner is also a line. I'm going to jump when I hit where that line would be, right toward that. And if you do that, you'll either stick, and the mobs will freeze if you're stuck, or you just make it up like that. 
And if you've never done this before, I probably would never do it on hardcore if I hadn't practiced it a ton in softcore. Um, but if you've never done this before, you want to come in and make sure you can make this jump 10 times in a row, at least getting stuck. If you were at this point, the mobs would freeze. Um, because you do not want to get in a situation where you're stuck like this. You miss the jump and you're stuck like this. And you're trying to get up. You can even jump straight up and get yourself hooked there. But, you know, in the heat of this, um, you kind of panic and you're stuck and they're all the mobs are all hitting you and you get stuck and get killed. I've been killed here before. Um, so you want to be pretty careful with it. In a pinch, if I do miss the jump, I immediately click lip and I try again. If I wouldn't make it right away, you could come over here. You can jump on top of this and jump on top of this. It's also a safe spot. Um, and everything would freeze and stop hitting you. And from here, you can jump up here too. So there's a lot of outs, um, a lot of ways to save yourself. It's pretty safe if you have some experience, but um, you do want to be careful. When I first pulled all the mobs and I had first pulled everybody and I did the little blizzard from up here on the wall and I was running along here, it's possible to stay way left on the wall like be like running right along the wall here and have the mobs right down here melee you as well. So you want to stay at least toward the middle of this um, and be safe as well. So um, you do want to be careful, but uh, it's certainly a possible farm. And you can see if you get sort of lucky with the greens, it's pretty good. And in, in well under 10 minutes, you can make 20 to 25 gold to stuff. So I farmed in here a lot before I just got completely tired of it and then switched over to farming the first few mobs in, in Skolomance just to try to make some gold. Um, this raiding business is like crazy um, in terms of if you really show up with all the consumes you need and you use them all, it's expensive to raid. And I found I had to farm quite a bit and I'd like to eventually farm an epic mount on this guy unless I die. So, And the last thing I'll show is um, getting out. Um, you know, it used to be or an SOM that you could uh, get out of here um, by going to a reset spot. You now cannot. What I usually do is I finish the kill, I do my loot, I stay right up, he right up here. I've got an alt in a group with me. I log out. I make the alt the uh, the group leader. I log out. I reset on the alt. Log back in. You'll be at. Um, it used to be you were at the instance portal. Now you'll be right at um, like Tenaris, which is kind of weird. And then you have to run over. So it's kind of slow. It's actually quicker if you're going to do multiple runs to just run out. And I'll show that now. Um, the danger in running out is you want to try not to pull anything if you can. And the thing that you want to make sure that you don't pull is a Shadow Hunter. You do not want to get hexed, especially while running out. You don't want to get hexed or frog. So I'll run out. I'm trying not to aggro anything. And now I think if you go right in the middle of these, you actually don't even aggro this pack but right through the center as a 60. So I'm still not in combat and I've gone pretty far. Stay to the right here. You don't aggro any of those. If you were coming in and you reached this point, you would Run up here if you're a lower level. Run up to here. Run up right to this spot. Aim to the left of center of this rock. Jump over it and be here. Safe spot. And you'd come over here. Drink up. Shield up. I put on a shadow protection pod here. You can actually get down onto this little thing here. Mount up and then start the rest of your run um, to get out of here. I'm just getting out and this is getting uh, long so I will end it. But it's not, not, not intended to be a full guide here. Kind of at the finish line now, so I don't care about pulling stuff. You can see you take a lot of shadow bolts and stuff, and when you're low level, that will like wreck you. Come out, reset, go again, keep making your gold. Um, if you made it this far, I uh, hope that helps. Thanks for watching.